abilities that have been completely removed from Overwatch but once existed or were in development. Now, Reinhardt's boomerang isn't one of them unless it would have been in the PvE, rest in peace, but the very first one is Bastion's Remote Mine. Yeah, you saw that correctly. Throw down the mine, drive it where you want, and then unleash a Reaper style ultimate. Ironic that they're using Reaper as an example. Could you imagine how broken this would have been? But on the flip side, probably a lot of fun. Better than what Bastion's alt is today. And this is regarding Overwatch 2, which already reworked Overwatch 1's Bastion, but this one is even cooler. I don't know, something about it is really, really fun, but if you really think about how hard it was to get Junkrat's ultimate right, this one could be quite the nightmare. But it still follows suit into what Bastion is, an artillery-based bot and controlling an area. Now the second thing I'm not going to spend much time on, just 15 seconds, because it is the fact that Bastion used to have a shield. Most people actually know this one because a lot of YouTubers have covered it over the years, but it's worth noting because it truly is one of the abilities that got removed from the game. Now the next one's actually to Junkrat. Junkrat had a completely different ability, and it was to do with his ultimate. Now, for a little bit of context, we all know Riptide is his current ultimate, right? You take out that tire, you roll it in the direction that you want, and you explode it. And the original ultimate is quite quite similar, but it had a little bit more to do with a rock. And I'll explain the details right after a quick word from the sponsor. Now, before getting into the video, there's this really cool app that I've been using and I want to show it to you guys. Today's sponsor, Z League. The app is called Z League and it's a super app for gamers. Think of it like a social media that you can scroll through, but then it's souped up. Like you're able to compete, you're able to have special profiles and there's no fluff. It's all about gaming. Now the fun part is just by using the app, you can earn coins for playing any of the 20,000 plus games that they support, and you get to redeem those coins for stuff like scuff controllers, gaming keyboards, or I'm even seeing a Nintendo Switch here, a Steam Deck, all for free. They also got this teammate finder called LFG, which is looking for a group, and it is by far the best way to find people to game with. You can filter on your interests, skill, region, whether you use a mic or don't, you just have to swipe through the different profiles and invite people to come play with you. And the most addicting of it all is the feed. You're able to swipe up and see some of the best gaming content, awesome clips, gaming memes, and everything you want. Again, without the fluff of other social media sites. You can even check out my own post here. I wouldn't want to show you an app without trying it, of course. So I went ahead and uploaded two posts total. It worked flawlessly. And if I go to my profile, you can see them here too. And they're high quality posts, if I say so myself. Where am I stuck? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Sure. Look at this one tap. Oh, guys, what are you waiting for? It's absolutely free. Use my link down below to download the Z League app today, and you'll get 500 coins for free to use towards your next big prize. Maybe you'll get a Nintendo Switch. Of course, don't forget to hit me with that follow. Maybe I'll be able to use their LFG, and we'll be able to get into a match together. Thanks again to Z League for sponsoring today's video. So what Junkrat originally had was actually a shoulder-mounted missile that was homing and could be controlled. Now, think of it this this way. You know when you throw out the mine and then you use that button to explode it, that button would be used for the homing missile. So think of like the, the tire, but you can control which direction it's going to go. The verticality, the flight, etc. And, and to be honest, it matches Junkrat quite perfectly. Like shooting a missile and then just controlling it mid-air. Imagine going through the map, sliding around. And I wouldn't be surprised that's the biggest reason that the actual tire can run up walls and, you know, jump off to kind of get that airstrike effect without being super easy and super, super overpowered. Moving from there, Genji used to have a bleed effect. Look at that. Once I dashed into, or once this player dashed into the Bastion, you'd see or hear the tick, 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 and it would slowly bleed them out. I think this is actually something super cool, and uh, okay, 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 maybe I'm stretching here a little bit. Maybe I'm stretching here a little bit. I wouldn't mind seeing this as a buff towards Genshi since he's currently underwhelming. Now, Blizzard says he's fine, but it would be kind of a fun way and a new mechanic to add to Genji that could maybe up his damage, but then be fine-tuned instead of just a flat number. It's a little bit creative and it does fit his theme a lot right you know he's a sword wielding ninja and causing some sort of bleed effect is super cool now it would only apply the bleed on a dash but it'd also be cool to see it applied on a sword slash in another form of buff since again it's super super fitting but for the sake of this video what was truly removed is just the passive the bleed passive on the dash as you can see listen here 
A little bonus seeing uh, the Bastion shield here. Now, another thing is Reaper could actually steal the souls so that Mercy could not use it to res. This was insane. When they literally made Mercy's mass res in the original Overwatch 1, you know it, she would fly over and mass res the entire team. They thought of a counter to it, and the original idea was that someone could pick Reaper, and when you kill the enemy, you could suck up their souls so they couldn't be resed by Mercy. This is such a creative counter, but I understand the philosophy as to why they didn't go through with it. Because what it would have caused is force people to play Reaper in order to counter Mercy, but in a new light. Not just like the way you play hit scan to counter Farah. Instead, it's literally one hero countering the other. After this, we also have the heal from Soldier. Instead of it being on the ground that would heal the allies, it was a self syringe. Very reminiscent of any sort of basic FPS game. To heal yourself, you stab yourself with a syringe and wouldn't actually heal your team. This would have changed Soldier a lot and would have made him super, super selfish. Now, he's obviously a DPS, so being selfish is not exactly bad, but having that AoE heal truly does lead to some interesting plays. Furthermore, instead of an animation of syringing yourself, you throw down the heal and then you're forced to play around that area to keep that heal going, right? With the syringe, I think the idea what Blizzard had in mind, it'd be very, very fast. So you'd pop the syringe extremely fast and then able to keep running. In this case, you got to throw down the heal and stay in this area. So it could have also been more powerful, but overall would have changed Soldier a lot. It's pretty different than what we have today, which is really, really cool. Now, okay, this next one is to do with Farah, and I actually think this is the same identity or thought proce process Blizzard had with Reaper. It was based off of the fact that Farah's concuss would instantly delete shields. It would do massive damage towards shields. And the thought process behind this, again, similar to you choose Reaper to counter Mercy, you choose Farah to counter shields. I don't actually think this is bad, but again, that's because of foreshadowing and hindsight. It's because shields ended up becoming a big problem in Overwatch 1, especially with the dual tank, and before you could even run triple tank, which was very popular for a little while. And having something that would counter shields directly would have actually helped the game quite a lot. More so generally, counters instead of extremely hard or more so obvious counters. Another little thing is that D.Va. D.Va's matrix or defense matrix used to work extremely differently. Instead of it being a toggle with a meter, it was a flat 10 second cooldown. But the problem with that is if you misused it or missed it even by a little, you were left in the open. You were left for dead, obviously losing a lot of that tank feel that D.Va currently has. Eventually, it was reworked and switched to allow you to instead pop the defense matrix whenever you want, but pay attention to a resource meter. Yeah, um, the next one's even crazier though. That one was minor. Actually, the D.Va one's pretty lame compared to this next one. This next one is hilarious because I think only OG Overwatch players who saw all of Symmetra's reworks will understand the evolution of what happened here. So the first iteration of Symmetra actually had you throw out a shield and when the shield passed through your teammates, it would give them a permanent shield that would, would regenerate forever until they were completely dead. Meaning if you passed your shield through five of your teammates, it used to be 6v6, five of your teammates, they would have a permanent 25 HP shield that would regen until they were dead. They were completely eliminated. What's funny is that eventually Blizzard did play with Symmetra having a shield. It was just in a different format and only people who know Symmetra's history will understand what I'm talking about. But those are just some of the things that were removed or changed ability-wise in Overwatch. If you want to see more, let me know and see you in the next one.